Today I want to give you guys a little review of this overhead mixer I recently purchased. You may have seen it over on Instagram. I posted a poll asking you guys if you want to see a review on it. 90% of you guys said yeah, so here I am. We're just going to talk about it, alright? So I purchased this uh, overhead mixer on eBay for $57.82. After tax, it was about $62, I think. I know it was a little over $60. So this is far cheaper than your like high quality overhead mixers. Most overhead mixers are like $200 to $400, maybe even $500. Google them, you'll know what I'm talking about. I also recommend you Googling them so you can compare them to this one to see if this $60 one is worth it. So here is the actual power box. There is the this cord right here that plugs in as the actual power. And then there's this cord here which is attached to the actual machine that you have to plug in to the power box. And if you guys notice, this back metal box actually pushes in like this, which isn't good. Uh, kind of tells me that this is probably a used machine. Um, and that makes me question how much longer, almost dropped that, <laughs> and that makes me question how much longer is this going to actually last because I can also tell it's used by like the scratches on it, the scratches up here, just how bad this claw kind of looks, like it just looks really old. I don't regret my purchase, I'm actually really happy I got it and I'll get more into that later, I just want to give you more of an overview of it. So like I said, this is the power box. Let's set that to the side. An issue with this machine is that it makes black scuff marks all over my surface. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but that's kind of annoying because most of my surfaces are white, which is a pain, but whatever, it washes off with some rubbing alcohol. But anyways, here is the base. This base is super heavy. It feels like cast iron, so it's a good, nice, heavy base to make sure it holds all this in place. Um, there is two bars. This first bar right here screws into this and then the second bar screws into this bar and then these black things just slide through the top so they're adjustable with this little screw over here super easy and then this claw can come out it just goes straight in and then you just tighten it with this here and then this claw can close by tightening this here I'm not going to do that and then it can get bigger. And then same with this thing over here, just unscrew this and you can adjust it down. It honestly isn't the smoothest, but whatever, it's not a big deal. Like I said, I only paid $60 for it, so you can't really expect much. And then of course, if you unscrew this, this whole thing right here comes out. So it's super easy to put together. I actually put it together without the uh, directions because I didn't think it came with directions until I emptied the box completely out and looked underneath the foam and there was directions. So you don't need directions to put together. You can either balance the beaker on top of this power box while you're mixing, but I don't really recommend that because if you turn this up to a really high power of mixing, this box starts to shake. So that might not be the uh, safest way to do it, but if you're just mixing with a slow power, this is fine. I am going to keep it up here just so you guys can see it better for this video, but typically I would recommend keeping your beaker here while you mix. Another thing you can do is actually put the beaker in the claw and then tighten it for some more insurance, making sure you know the beaker doesn't fly anywhere. But the issue with that is this only holds a 250 milliliter beaker. So that's kind of a con. I'd imagine the more expensive mixers probably have a claw that can hold bigger beakers. I mean, whatever, it's not the end of the world. So just for this video, I'm going to keep the power box over here so you guys can see it better. What you want to do is turn this knob over to on and you'll start hearing like a ticking noise. Then you want to turn on the power button and you'll see the red light turn on and then in order to start mixing you will turn this knob the higher up the knob is turned the faster it spins honestly I have not needed to turn it up all the way yet I really only need it to about there I, yeah I don't even go halfway it spins super fast and obviously if you turn it up too high this box kind of shakes which is a little scary 
So let's actually attach the mixer. So I do sanitize the mixer. I wash it with soap and water, let it air dry, and then I put it in my sanitizer solution and then I let it air dry. So I do recommend sanitizing it because we love good sanitary practice. So here is the mixer. It has this little like wobbly sharp thing on the end. And all you do is push it in and then screw it in. You wanna make sure you screw it in with the screwdriver to make sure it's nice and tight, but I don't feel like going and grabbing a screwdriver right now. So now we want to lower this down. You don't want it to completely touch the base because that will scratch up your beaker. So you want it to be like floating just a tad, like so. Let me turn around my beaker so you guys can see it better. All right, so now all you gotta do is turn it on. There you go. And then of course, like I said, if you turn it up too high, it'll start to shake, which is scary. Yep, I feel it all vibrating. Woo! Did you hear that? It started scraping the edges of the uh, glass beaker. So it definitely works better when you don't have it balancing on this surface. Um, but I just want it higher up so you guys can see it better. So it is literally that easy to use. So easy to put together, so easy to work. I figured it all out with all the directions. So let's talk about why you would want one of these. First off, this mixer is so much more easier to sanitize. It doesn't really have any like hidden compartments to it. So it's a much more sanitary item as opposed to the uh, immersion blender. So if you take a look at the immersion blender, this is typically what you've seen me use on my channel. Uh, first off, it's a pain to wipe off after you're done mixing your lotion because lotion gets all stuck in here, all on top, so you have to like dig in there and get all the lotion off. Also, afterwards, you have to wash it and then dig in here behind the blade to clean it. Typically, you wanna make sure you're wearing like some like rubber gloves when you do it to make sure uh, you don't cut yourself at least. Um, but yeah, so it's a pain to clean. Also, it's a pain to dry because water can get stored up in here. So you need to let it air dry in this position and in this position to make sure all the water comes out. And then after you wash it with soap and water, you need to make sure you submerge it all in sanitizer and then let it air dry at this angle and this angle to make sure all the water comes out. Also, I have heard that bacteria can build up in the thing, which is why I sanitize it completely submerged. And that also makes me think that you don't wanna use this forever because it might build up with bacteria. I haven't had issues with that yet. Um, let me know if you have, but that's just what I've heard. Another reason this is a lot better is because I can just turn it on and walk away. As opposed to the immersion blender, when I am doing emulsions, I have to mix it take it out, walk away for a few minutes, come back, mix it again, take it out, walk away for a few minutes, uh, mix it again. And that's just kind of annoying when I'm really busy. Obviously, it's not a big deal if you're not busy, but I'm doing tons of things at once. I'm always multitasking. Sometimes I'll forget about my emulsion. Um, but yeah, so this is just a lot nicer. You can just flip it on, let it mix for like 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, however long you need, and then come back and it's good to go. So that's why I really like that as opposed to these. But I do want to purchase more of these mixers for the immerse for the high share mixer. I hope I can find those. That way I can have like five or four of these. That way, like after I'm done using one, I can wash it, let it air dry, and then if I need to do another emulsion <laughs> that day, uh, I can just use my other mixer and not have to worry about my mixer drying and being sanitized and all that kind of stuff. You get what I'm saying? Also, another reason why I really like this is I am able to work with ingredients that I couldn't use before. This first ingredient that comes to mind is sucre gel. So I did an experimenting video on my Patreon so long ago, maybe like a year ago, using sucre gel. Came to find out you need an overhead mixer for sucre gel to really work. It's possible to use it without it, but you need a lot of patience and I don't have that. So it didn't work for me. Now having this, I do want to experiment with sucre gel again. So let me know if you want to see that. Another ingredient that has worked with this overhead mixer and didn't work using an immersion blender before is Verisoft EQ65. When I used uh, Verisoft with an immersion blender, I noticed there were still chunks of the emulsifier in it as if it didn't emulsify completely. And I don't know why that happened because I um, emulsified it the same exact way I've done with every other emulsifier. Come to find out, 
Verisoft is a little bit more picky and it needs a lot more constant mixing. So now I can use Verisoft EQ65 and have no problem. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ingredients out there where you need an overhead mixer in order to get it to work. So I'm really excited to start working with those ingredients. Let me know if there's any ingredients out there that you know of that needs an overhead mixer and I might buy those and try them out. So do you need the overhead mixer? No, not at all. You can just use good old immersion blender. Is this more convenient? Heck yeah it is. Is this the best quality? No. Do I recommend you buying it? Totally, if you got 60 bucks, totally buy this. I will link it down below if I can find another listing on eBay. When I went to purchase this, there was a lot of listings for it, so I'm sure I'll find it on eBay again. I'll also link to some of the more expensive ones over on Amazon in case you guys want to purchase those. I will make sure it's an affiliate code, which means if you guys do decide to purchase it, I will get a little bit of the percentage of the sale. That doesn't mean it costs more for you guys. I just get a little bit of the sale so it just helps me out and it doesn't hurt you at all anytime you see links in my description box that go to amazon or make your own dot buzz they are affiliates i used to only be an affiliate with amazon but now i am with make your own dot buzz too so use my links it really helps me out it doesn't hurt you at all it just benefits me and that'd be freaking awesome was it worth 60 bucks totally i love it that's all i have to say maybe one day when i have like tons of money i will purchase like a 200 300 dollar one maybe I don't know. I don't know how much longer this is gonna last me. Like I said, it kind of seems like it's been used and it may be on its last leg. I don't know, I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know if this ends up breaking. Um, but yeah, so hope you guys enjoy this review and let's get into the Patreon shoutouts. At Stardust Bath and Body, Nature's Farm Girl, Kennedy's Essentials, Let's Blend, Creative with Love, Wallflower Wildflower, Heartfelt Beauty, At Sugared underscore Pineapple, KAJ Bath and Body, Blue Mint Soaps, Say Tara, at Salt Air Label, Lunise Beauty, Ardure Naturals, Shark City Naturals, Ohana Lay, at Danny Botanicals, Eclectic Beauty Cosmetics, Escape Bath and Body, EC Naturals, and at Nino55 over on Instagram. Also, I sell products myself over on Etsy. Go check out my Etsy shop. It'll be linked down below along with all my lovely patrons. So let me know if you guys have ever used an overhead mixer and how you liked it. Let me know if you're gonna be purchasing this cheap one. Let me know if you're gonna be purchasing the expensive one or let me know if you just really don't care and the immersion blender is working out great for you. So I do hope you guys enjoyed the review and hope to see you guys in my next video. Later. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision, now I'm on a mission to find myself.